Lori Ann Smith, and this is a Survivor Weekend check-in video with me. I used to do these a while back, and then, you know, life got in the way. COVID-19, everything else. <laughs> so, um, I figured I'd do one. I've had a lot of people commenting on my videos, especially the Board in Hell um, videos. And really, so many wonderful comments and encouraging words kindness you know i'm not used to that um, i have i do have some good friends in my real life <laughs> and they are good to me but i'm not used to getting such um you know warm and positive feedback from the public and so i really appreciate it i've tried to comment and respond um you know to everyone who who took the time to you know say something and share their stories and there's just so many of us out here who know you know what Sadly, you know, what abuse is like because we've been abused, right? So I used to do these videos and uh, sort of, you know, my husband passed away and I was really sick and all sorts of things happened. And um, COVID-19 then, all last year, just, you know, 2020 coping with uh, isolation and really trying to stay sane in an insane situation. <laughs> uh, my health was really bad and uh, I was working on getting a lot of tests in the meantime, with COVID-19 happening, um, it was kind of difficult to do because, you know, the, the hospitals and the, the clinics and everything that, you know, all the different, you know, specialists and whatnot are so busy because of COVID-19 um, and so inundated. So it took a long time to get all this stuff done. So I'm now starting to feel a little bit better. They've got my blood pressure under control a bit better than it was. It was stroke level for a year. And... Um, Really all through 2020, so all, all of COVID-19 days, <laughs> and um, hopefully this will all be over soon, that's what I'm hoping, but, um, you know, so much got put off, uh, even though I was home all year, just sitting around trying not to go out, so I, because I didn't want to catch that COVID, COVID-19, so <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, so many things got done, and, um, but I thought I'd do this video, because I haven't checked in for a long time to, just, you know, share with other survivors of abuse, you know, sort of what I do to help cope and to, um, you know, deal with the day-to-day -day stresses that are, are, are normal in life. I mean, life is stressful, that's for sure, uh, for most of us. And, you know, then as a survivor of abuse, you know, how do I learn to cope? Uh, how am I going to face this situation, you know? <laughs> it's nice to have you here. And um, so, yeah, it's it's tough. It really is. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've worked on over, especially the last few years um, since my husband passed away, was just learning how to sit and deal with my own stuff on my own because I haven't had him here to offer support. Um, you know, he was he was my he was my best friend, my husband, and you know he was also my biggest support, obviously. So with him gone, I had to readjust and learn. You know, okay, I need to. I need to then be able to work and, and get through this stuff on my own and not rely on having somebody around 24 seven, you know, who can be there for me when I'm having a, a some sort of a, a anxiety attack or a meltdown or, or whatever the issue is. So these things are difficult. They really are. Um, you know, for some people, especially just starting out your healing journey, I've been online for a long time now and since 2007, really, I started doing the bulk of the work 2009 but I did start originally in 2007. So I've been on this healing journey for a long time and <laughs> it took a long time <laughs> to get where I am today as far as my, you know, my mental health, my mental well-being is and just how I feel about life and how I feel about myself and the world. And, and you know, things are getting better. It did take time though. And, um, you know, there's always, like I said, there's always these days that will just hit you, you know, come at you like from out of nowhere. And it's like, this is too much. You know, how am I going to, how am I going to deal with this? And we, we all have those days. It's common. And uh, most people are coming from a life of abuse. So they have the coping skills and they have the support around them to help them actually deal with these things. Many times survivors of abuse are isolated already. And then with COVID-19, they're just that much more isolated. I heard from a lot of my survivor friends who see therapists and uh, counselors and whatnot that, this was very difficult for them because the counseling offices were closed and they were like, great, now what am I going to do? You know, 
um, I had to try to work out some online stuff. I've always kind of done that. I've sort of, sort of tended to be more, I guess, comfortable with online support groups because my husband was terminally ill uh, for a long time, 17 years, and it was just better that I could be home to be with him instead of running around all the time because I was working from home uh, so I could take care of him. So I did a lot of stuff online and, and even some online support groups. Um, when I first started my healing journey, that's what I chose to do because I felt that there was safety in uh, numbers and safety in a, a, a non, you know, being anonymous. I could go in and join a support group. I didn't even have to give my name and uh, my real name. And they don't know who you are, but it, they're very, very helpful. And so, you know, that's what I did at the beginning. And then later I joined some support groups um, just as, you know, just as me with my name. It, it didn't bother me anymore. And it's just been, uh, like I said, it's been a long journey. And I guess, like I was saying, um, you know, the best thing we can do really is not overload ourselves. You know, yeah, things have to get done. And yeah, we do need to do things and take care of things. And sometimes it's all a bit overwhelming. Right now I'm overwhelmed completely because it's just me and I've got so much to do. I'm behind the eight ball. I don't have a job. <laughs> I'm always month to month because I'm not sure how, how things are going to go. <laughs> and so many people are in this situation. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their homes because of this COVID-19 thing. Um, it's, a, it's a mess. It really is for most people. So then as, you know, as a survivor of abuse with already with difficulties and stuff, you know, then how do we cope? Like, what do we do? Um, I started to work on just sort of managing what I could manage day to day, especially in last summer, in the thick of this whole COVID-19 thing when they were like, you know, don't go out and, you know, um, just only to get food, you know, and then there's food shortages and toilet paper shortages and all this stuff going on. Um, that was pretty insane. And um, I started to think, well, I'm just gonna go day to day and do what I can today. And I'm not gonna worry about tomorrow. I'm not gonna put the stress of tomorrow on myself. <laughs> today is hard enough to get through. So let's not worry about that. And that, that kind of took a lot of pressure off. Um, a lot of stuff didn't get done. <laughs> so as you can see by my place, it's a wreck. I seriously have a lot of work to do. But, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I didn't want to stress myself out. So I was like, okay, this will all get done. Where's my priority? What's my priority today? You know, and that is to, first of all, to get enough sleep, to not binge eat a bunch of junk and let's eat healthy as possible it's hard to eat healthy when you don't have a lot of money but um just do the best you can you know uh do some sort of de-escalating sort of de-stressing especially with this uh, the, the world the way it is today and the mess that's going on really all around the world i'm in canada but i'm from the states originally and you know i'm watching kind of what's going on down there too and i'm like it's a mess you know um, but the world's a mess right now. Just look at what's going on around the world. So, you know, basically it's kind of like, you know, I don't watch a lot of that news. I really don't. I just kind of keep tabs on what's happening and that's it. Because I don't want to get drawn into the negativity and all of that stuff because it really brings me down. So I tend to pay attention a little bit to what's going on and then just kind of let it go. And um, find something that I like to do, you know. Um, listen to music, you know, my favorite music, or read a book, or, you know, just find something that's, that's that's comforting and can sort of help you to level out, you know. Um, it is, it's tough. Hi, hi, Shepherd Girls, how are you? <laughs> I'm glad you could be here. Yeah, and uh, I hope your day is going well. Um, I'm just talking about kind of how I de-stress, you know. I'll just put on some tunes or I'll watch one of my favorite movies. I, I do have favorite movies that I like to watch and, um, you know, play guitar, whatever. I'm learning to play guitar. I really, I'm not good yet. <laughs> I've been working on it for three or four years, but it's a lot of work. But um, I'm enjoying it. So that's the whole issue. It doesn't matter if you're any good at it. The idea is, you know, if you like to sing, sing. If you like to, you know, do arts and crafts, do arts and crafts. Like whatever your thing is. You know, we have to find things that help us to de-stress and take us, take us, sort of pull us out of that funk, you know, that we might get into, um, especially because we're feeling overwhelmed. And take some time for ourselves, you know, and not, it shouldn't be all about, oh, I have to do this and this and this, and 
now I'm stressed and, you know, get down on ourselves. Then all of a sudden we're feeling sort of the same things that we might have felt as, you know, being abused as a child, being told that we're useless and worthless, we can't do anything right. And, you know, we shouldn't even be here or something. You know, this is kind of what I heard when I was growing up. And uh, I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm doing good. <laughs> I just need to, you know, put it all in perspective and just realize I can't do everything perfectly. And today I can only do what I can do today. So that's kind of what got me through COVID-19 2020 was just, you know, take the time to, you know, rest. That's what I did. Um, and not, not put too much pressure on yourself. Um, yeah, Carrie was saying that she's been following Bob Ross. Bob Ross is awesome, Joy of Painting series. And I do remember him, absolutely. And his stuff is incredible. I just watch him, he just, he was just so gifted and so talented, you know, to be able to take some paint, just slap it on the canvas. Before he knew it, he had this beautiful scenery with this, you know, like a meadow with these beautiful trees and it was just sunlight coming through. He was just really amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like, we need to find joy in this life. It shouldn't be all about uh, world crisis, um, you know, <laughs> all this crazy stuff going on. There, ha there, there is normal stuff going on in life, and you know, it's it's important I think for people, especially people who may have PTSD, who struggle with past issues, you know, survivor issues, especially adult survivor issues, things like that, PTSD, anxiety, any number of things. It's important to not get caught up in that because it's easy to do especially if you're on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere where there's a mass push for negativity all over the place. It's everywhere. I tend to avoid it. And, you know, I like on, on my Facebook page, I only post really important positive messages. I don't share any garbage because I'm like, people don't need to see more of that. They really don't. And they don't even really need my opinion on any of it. There's plenty of that out there. Um, you know, I just try to share peace and, and, and kindness and you know that's kind of what I do um, because that's what I like uh, I'm also not I'm not uh, a person that sort of hides away from the truth and the reality things as everybody knows what, what, what I do here <laughs> it's just that I don't let it take over my day because that's so it could happen it's so easy to do you know you're watching the news and before you know it it's like oh my god this world is you know and then you know all of a sudden you realize oh my god I got a pile of stuff to do I got laundry to do especially if you have children I don't have any children so you know I mean I've got a cat that's it so she's easy to take care of but you know if you have children and a family you're taking care of um you know you got that stress and that pressure and, and then you've got most people have so much pressure on all sides coming at them from all angles and we do need to allow ourselves to take a few moments to just breathe and just be and just find out who we are. What do we like to do? You know, um, I've had more time than most people do because my husband passed away two and a half years ago. So it's been very quiet. <laughs> I was already isolated way before COVID-19. <laughs> it's, it's been quiet. Let me tell you. Um, not only that, but last year I lost my job. So it's, I've been off work for over for a year and a month. So 13 months now. Talk about isolation. Um, it's been horrible. But on one side, but when I look at it that way, it has been quite distressing and, and horrible. But I also look back at the whole year, and I really did absolutely kind of just get in touch with my feelings, my thoughts. Um, what do I like to do? What, what favorite movie do I want to watch? Um, this kind of stuff that I might not have made time for before. Probably wouldn't have and, 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 and couldn't. So I think it's more like whatever we have going on in our life, um, you know, any one of us, like we're all different. We all have different, come from different walks of life and have different different priorities in our lives. But whatever it is, I think it's just important to remember to not overload yourself with a lot of negative self-talk. You know, oh, I didn't get this done. You know, oh my God, I didn't get that done. And I'm such a loser. You know, all this stuff that just kind of brings us back to where we were as children, not getting our, not getting what we needed being treated horribly and you know especially if you're abused as a child unfortunately um and reinforcing that oh i'm such a loser because 
oh, you know, I can't do this or I can't make this happen tomorrow or, you know, for some reason I let this slip and now look at the mess that I'm in sort of thing. Um, you know, no one's perfect. No one. Not even the people out there that are acting and pretending that they're perfect are not perfect. <laughs> they're not doing everything right either. You know, we're, none of us are getting it all right all the time. And so it's kind of like, no, I think we need to be kind to ourselves, you know, and not be too hard on ourselves, you know. That's that's sort of what kind of what's helped me to get through COVID-19. It's like, yeah, a lot of stuff needed to get done, but it can wait. It's not that important, you know what I mean? Uh, the world, whole world's not going to crash down because I didn't, like, you know, completely clean this place top to bottom, you know what I mean? It's like, well, I had a lot of pain, and, and my, like I said, my health wasn't very good. And so I had to make a decision. It's kind of like I needed to relax and stay calm because I was stroke level for a year with 200, like 200 blood, pre blood pressure was 200 over 186 all year or something. It was horrible. So I wasn't feeling well for like the whole year. <laughs> I was really sick and had cancer, had skin cancer, all sorts of things. Had to get that removed and I was just not well. Things are looking much better now. I got a good doctor and uh, finally I changed doctors. I got smart and I was like, I got to do something here. Something's got to happen. But um, I was in so much pain because of my ankle from this injury, from this car accident that I had so many years ago, um, that I wasn't doing much, just kind of sitting with my feet up because my ankle was just killing me, just walking on it. Surgeons had looked at it. They were like, well, you know, there's nothing really, we, we, can, we can't do anything for you, really. I mean, it's, it's toast. And I'm like, well, I know that, right? Well, what are you going to help me for the pain, you know? Um, they gave me, they finally got me cortisone shots. So I had to have a, a approved for, I had to have an approval for cortisone shot. But I'm so thankful because that's made it so at least I can walk, right? Uh, because I was having trouble walking. So this is, things are kind of slowly improving, but I'm talking slow. Like it's, it doesn't, it just doesn't happen overnight. So what do I do in the meantime, you know, sitting, you know, and this is how we find ourselves quite often, you know, as, as, these things in life come at us, you know, uh, things quite often don't get fixed overnight. Um, it takes time. And so what do you do in the meantime? I think it's like, well, that's what I'm saying, you know, that's what I'm saying is just, we need to be good to ourselves. We need to just relax and say, okay, I can really only do what I can do today. I'm not worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got like troubles all set up for tomorrow. Today, I'm just going to get through today. <laughs> Do the best I can, you know, and at the end of the day, I can say, hey, I did the best I could, um, and that's all I can do, you know, and allow yourself some time to just breathe and, and you know, whatever it is that you like to do to sort of self, to, to sort of take care of yourself, you know what I mean? Um, I just think it's important because life is stressful. It really is. And, you know, there will be things come up always that will throw us throw us off again you know what I mean it's kind of like oh things were going so great because that's what I keep keep wishing for the days back before my husband passed away that when things weren't such a roller coaster ride you know right now it's like everything is like oh my god am I gonna be able to live I'm just living month to month you know that's generally always the way it's been for me so I'm kind of used to it <laughs> so that's all right but I'm kind of like I wish things would just settle down and smooth out and I wouldn't mind having a couple like six months or a year where things just went really well. Sometimes I just sort of pray for that. <laughs> I'm like, could I just have like six months or a year that things would just go smooth and it'd be nice, you know? Um, I'm waiting for that. I'm kind of like, but I'm not, you know, that's just it. The meantime, I have to get through. So I just, I don't know. It's, it is hard. Um, you know, it is hard, no doubt. And especially when we're on our own and we're struggling and what do you do? You know, I know um, I belong to the ASCA Adult Survivors of Child Abuse, the Morris Center program. Their, uh, their support groups, they have many of them and they're online. Um, if you haven't heard of that, it's a wonderful program. You can join online. You can even join anonymously. The only person that knows your real name would be like the administrator of the group. But the group, you could just have any name on there. Um, you know, you can be anonymous. And so if you're struggling and you're having a hard time and you're like, man, I don't know, you know, how I'm going to cope and I don't know how I'm going to get through the next 10 minutes because I've been there. <laughs> um, those groups are really important. 
some of them run like 20, there's a few out there that actually run 24 hours where you can just call and talk to somebody. And these are survivors that know where you've been. They're just, they're like survivors, like survivors of child abuse and all survivors of child abuse who know how hard it is. And um, NASCA also has a, a setup like that, NAASCA.org. I used to volunteer with them. And uh, they have a, a 89 to 90 people or something like that that you can call. So if you can't get a hold of one, you just keep calling through the, through the list until you get somebody. And <laughs> they're willing to talk to you 24 hours. They don't care what time of day. They don't care what time, what time of night. They're, they're, they're there for people to talk to. They're like a, they're like a uh, you know, um, it's like a safety line. You know, you can call and, and find somebody that you can talk to. So that you don't have to, so that you know that you're not alone. This is just how it's so important. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm alone for a long, you know, I've been isolated from people with this COVID-19. Most of us are, uh, but I'm really isolated because my husband passed away. But I'm not really alone, you know, because I know that if I, if I need to, I can make a call to any one of those places, you know, and, and, and have somebody to talk to that knows where I've been and know how, knows how hard it is. And also can help find resources, because that's another big thing. Um, you know, sometimes we just don't know that there's these resources out there for us. Um, and Or maybe in our area, we just have run out of ideas of where to get help. Um, there's lots of places like that that you just look around. And, like, if you can't find any, you just get a hold of me. <laughs> Send me a message. You know, you can get a hold of me on Facebook. I'm all over the place. And... Um, you know, you can, or you can contact anybody at NASCA. Like I said, they're totally trustworthy people. I know because a, a lot of them are my friends. So I know who these people are. So they're, they're cool. And they're, they are, they do mean what they say. And that is that they're there for you to help you. And because they're survivors too. So they know. Um, and so it's just important for people to know that even if you are on your own and like myself with this COVID-19 thing sitting around with no possibility of really having many people around for a long time until we get this vaccine stuff situated. Um, we're not really alone. You can reach out, get help. Um, and I'm going to be hopefully doing this once a week here, same time. So right around noon on Saturdays, because I used to do this a while back, like I said, and I like doing it. Um, it's kind of nice for me because it helps me to think about where I'm at in my healing journey and kind of what I need to work on. And, uh, I'm still working on stuff too. I'm always working on something. Right now I'm kind of working on the CSA child sexual abuse. I'm still working through that um, a little bit with the workbook and stuff. I kind of put it off though, because like I said, things got a little bit hairy with my health and I decided to not stress. And so, you know, sometimes we have to take a break. That's all there is to it. It's like, you can recognize the signs. It's kind of like, okay, this is all becoming too overwhelming. I'm going to take a break. And that's what I do. I just sort of, you know, sort of gauge how I'm feeling about things. And it's like, am I stressed? Yeah, I'm stressed. Okay, it's break time. <laughs> it's like, let's just mellow out, you know, take some time off, do something we like to do. And um, so, you know, it's, it's important for self-care, you know, sort of recognize what we need and start working on those things, you know, little by little by little. Uh, like, like I always say, one step at a time, basically, because that's all you can do. Um, it just doesn't happen overnight, unfortunately. That's what I was hoping. You know, you just snap your fingers and, no, oh, it's good. I'm, I'm done. I'm better. I feel great. It's like, no, it's, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, it's like, I wish it did. So, you know, it's tough. It really is. But we can, we can do it. We can make it. Um, so that's about all I have to say for today. And we'll see, you know, next week, same time, same place. And we'll see what we'll talk about there. But, you know, if you have any suggestions or anything, you can leave them here. I know um, we've got Shepherd Girls, and she's left quite a lot of comments there. Um, and if anybody's got any ideas or if you have any questions or whatever, you can leave them in the live chat, and I'll get back to you for sure. Um, you know, I, I'm happy to kind of talk about anything you know, sort of like child abuse related, like adult survivor stuff. Um, you know, I'm always happy to talk about that with people. And 
as people know, I've done a lot of talking about it, <laughs> thousands of hours. So it's like, I don't mind. And um, if, if you have a question or if you need some resources, like I said, get a hold of me because I do know of um, places that actually um, can help you actually in your area find resources. So, and that, that's, me, that's basically NASCA. AU4H, that advocates united for humanity. I'm, I'm with them now. So I left NASCA and now I'm with my, my two best friends. Actually, these are my best friends from years ago. <laughs> so we, we got back together. They were still going strong with advocates united for humanity. But I left them because my husband was getting sicker and sicker. The stress was too much. And I just decided I needed a break. I'm like, okay, I'm dropping off. But then NASCA picked me up a little bit later. <laughs> so I was with them for a while, uh, for quite a few years. And, um, and then went back to AU4H. So we're, we have resources on our website as well. So you can always check that out. That's Advocates United for Humanity. Um, we have a, a whole resource section for people. But um, NASCA is geared for uh, adult survivors of child abuse because it's the National Association of Adult Survivors of Child Abuse. And they do have some great resources on their website. And, um, but yeah, if I can help you find info, like I said, get a hold of me. I wish you a wonderful day. I really do. I'm today, I'm going to try to just pick up some things and tidy up and clean up. <laughs> I've got some things I got to do. I got to put the Christmas tree away. Uh, Cause I'm going to, I'm going to do some work and, and clean and move some stuff around in here. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. And, um, but I'm not going to overdo it because seriously with my health, the way it was um, for the last year, I got to kind of take it slow, but um, I'm also going to make time to just relax, you know, take it easy. And I'll probably end up playing some guitar later guitar practice. <laughs> so I'm still working on just learning some songs. It's tricky. It's really tough. You know, um, I'm trying to learn how to play uh, the rain song and by Jimmy Page. And it's really difficult. I've been working on that for a while. It seems so easy because it actually isn't all that hard, but it's hard for me. And uh, it, but when you look at it, it's not it's not that it's not that difficult of a song. But for me, it is. So I'm working on it. But um, you know, I just, my heart goes out to anybody out here who's struggling. Um, like I said, I know how hard it is. I've been, you know, when I first started my healing journey, I was so far down. It was just unbelievable. I had so much work to do. But I haven't forgotten about that. You know, like, like I haven't forgot what that feels like, even though it's been since 2007. Um, that's really 13 years, almost 14. In April... April, May of, 2000, of 2021, that would be 14 years. So, I mean, it's a long time since I've been on my healing journey, but I haven't forgotten it. Um, not at all. The, the day that, the lowest day of my life, actually, which happened right around there, where I hit rock bottom. And, you know, I mean, after years of coming through what I had been through, um, at the age of, like, 41, hitting rock bottom like that, I was like, how long? does this have to, how long do I have to keep going through this, you know, um, because all through my 20s and 30s, it was, it was just always haunting me and always there, and I, I, rem I, I haven't forgotten what that's like, I know exactly what that's like, and the difference from where I'm at right now, or from there to where I'm at right now, I mean, I was at the very bottom of the very bottom as I could possibly go, and now, have, I mean, is there complete healing? People have asked me that. You know, and Some people have said yes, that they have completely healed and they're done. And I, I, I think that is possible, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not there quite yet. <laughs> I still have some work to do. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll get, if I'll get there. But I, I'm, I'm still working on it little by little. But I have learned to find love in my heart, you know, love, love for myself, which was really difficult because I hated myself. Love for my, my life and my body and who I am. It, it was difficult, but I've worked through that. I, I find I, I, I love people. I love other people. I have love in my heart. Um, you know, and I have the desire to keep going. And I have, um, I can find joy, you know. And so that's why I do these shows. Because my abusers, you know, it's, it's, regardless of whether they intended to try to kill me or not, which which some of it was in, intentional. They were trying to kill me. My dad actually did try to kill me once, and uh, my mom a couple of times. So it's, you know, then they just tried to kill me by getting me to kill myself. 
you know? And I, I couldn't find joy. I couldn't really, you know, I couldn't see the good stuff, really. I, I had a hard time um, understanding that life doesn't have to be all about pain and, and hurting and sorrow, because that's basically, that's what it was for me you know, for so many years, for so many of us out here, right? And I, I started to grasp and hold on to all the goodness that I could, that I could grasp at, at one time. And I was like, no, that's not what love, love, life isn't about hatred and pain and evil and just suffering. That's not what it's about. That's what they told me it was about. That's what they made me, that's what they made me live, was a life like that. And I thought, I don't have to keep doing that, you know? And I, I went through John Bradshaw's books, mainly, John Bradshaw. And uh, he really taught me a lot through those books, let me tell you. Uh, Healing the Shame That Binds You, and the other one was, um, or, yeah, something like that. And then the other one's uh, Healing the Wounded Child Within or Loving the Wounded Child Within or whatever. Those two books that he has, with, they're kind of like workbooks too. And, and I was reading and I was like, you know, he had this thing where he was talking about this necklace being put around your neck, you know, as a, in the, you know, as a child, you, 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 all this garbage is on this necklace and it's around your neck and it's all the abuse and the pain and the torment and the torture and the, every horror that you could possibly imagine is on this necklace around your neck. And he says, you don't have to wear that thing. It doesn't... It, it, it's not yours. They put it there, but it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. And I took that necklace off. I could. I envisioned myself ripping this thing off my neck that my family had put around my neck. Especially my, you know, I'm, I'm blaming my family for this. It was my mother, it's my dad, and my brother, right, mainly. And I took this necklace and I threw it away, like in, mentally, you know, psychologically, spiritually. I just threw it away, and I'm like, never again. I'm not even going to pick that thing up. It's gone. It's gone. I will not wear that ever again. So there, that taught me that I don't have to play that same role that they set me up for, which was a, which was a victim role. You know, that I'm a victim and I'm wounded and I'm useless and worthless and all of this stuff that they told me and they put on me. I'll never make it, you know, I'm a loser. I'm, uh, you know, whatever, all this stuff that I learned growing up, you know. No, I stopped playing that role. And I started to find out who I really was. I'm like, I'm none of those things that they told. Either I'm not, you know what I mean. I'm not, you know, it's. But I'm not the stupidest either. And it's like, you know, I was, I was um, determined. I was just determined to do them wrong. <laughs> so that's what I did. It's taken me a while, but let me tell you, I'm like, you know what, you were, you abusers of mine were so wrong. <laughs> You, you know, so the shame belonged to them, not to me. And it's, uh, it's, I'm glad, I'm so glad to be on this side of the, of, of where I was, you know what I mean? I'm so much further away from that point zero of being at the lowest point in my life ever, the age of 41, you know, so many years later, I'm way, way, you know, on the other side of that. And I still remember what that's like. I'll never forget it but I'm not there anymore and I don't have to go back there because I'm learning how to cope and I'm learning how to deal with stuff and I'm changing the way that I feel about myself and about who I am and about my life you know what I mean so it's really important to do the work uh, but if you can't do it by yourself and you know like I'm saying not everybody should attempt to do this stuff on their own I had a friend actually two like two two uh, people in my life who are, live in Australia were used to be psychotherapists. One still is, but the other one used to be a practicing psychotherapist, but she's retired now. And she ended up, these people ended up helping me out with that, with the uh, child sexual abuse, which was great. So I wasn't really on my own with that. But not everybody has somebody like that who can do that for them, right? So what I would say, if, you, if, you, if you're not coping well, do you think you're going to self-injure? Do you think you're you know, you're going to hurt somebody else, you're going to hurt yourself. You seriously need to make the best choice you can possibly make for yourself right now, and that is to get help. And I'm not joking. Do not be further destroyed because of what somebody else did to you. Mm -mm. No, we did not deserve that. You did not deserve that. 
No, no one does, right? So we have to make the best, we have to kind of be our own best advocates. And we have to get the help that we need. It is really, really important. So that's my main message for today. <laughs> be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. If you don't know how to do that, get somebody to help you find out how to do that. And learn to start taking care of yourself and caring for yourself. Because that's the only way you can really care about somebody else. You have to care about yourself first. And, you know, we ha you have to love yourself in order to be able to give love and receive love. You got to know what that love is. You know, you got to know what love is. Then, so we have to find out, you know, it's, it's just so important. So, um, you know, John Bradshaw's work, very good. If you can't afford the books, like I, I literally, a friend of mine bought those books for me uh, years ago because I was so broke, as always. <laughs> so, I've always been sort of so broke. And a friend of mine bought me these books and sent them to me, which was really cool. And because uh, I didn't have the money for them. So this is the thing, um, you know, you can maybe check and see if a library has them. And some of this stuff you can get online. It's posted. It's out there. Uh, Robert Burney, The Dance of Wounded Souls. That's another good one. He's really good. Burney, Robert Burney, B-U-R-N-E-Y. I, I really did a lot of work, like extensive reading of his stuff. And he has a website that is amazing. Almost all of his stuff is on there. So you don't even have to buy his book because he basically has everything that's in that book is on his website. And so, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff out there that will really help you to make sense of where you've been, what you've been through, and where you can go from there. It, it, it can be good. <laughs> you don't have to keep going in that destructive pattern that they put you on. That's the thing. So it took me to the age of 42 to figure that out. I hope it doesn't take you that long, you know. If you're younger, a younger person, I hope it, it doesn't take you that long to figure out you don't have to keep going that route. You can change it, right? So I'm I'm thankful to be on this side of it, let me tell you. So I guess we'll end off here for today. I wish you all the best. I, I thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. Carrie and Kefir Girls, and I've got other people here too dropping, dropping in, and I wish you all the best. And um, Seriously, like if you need something, get a hold of me. Um, if you need help finding resources, get a hold of me. I'll be back next Saturday if there's something that you want to talk about. You know, you can always contact me. Um, and you can, or you can leave it in the, um, like I said, in the little live chat box because I'll read those comments. And if there's something there, um, like a question or, you know, info that you need, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that you get it. So just take really good care of yourselves until the next time. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being here and sharing this time with me. Bye for now.